All right, let's come over here and we'll make a pickaxe. Oh, no. oh, what's this? Oh, shit. Um, I guess I better... Hey, bro, here's Gary. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were meant to be uh, editing the new well, HS place. Yes, I'm... Yep. I really think you should. This is No Man's Sky. Yes, No Man's Sky. Not No Man's Sky. That's, yeah, before anyone starts to get hard feelings or clicks away because you really think you know all there is to know about it, we're going to be doing something a little different. Video game essay, if you will. We're going to be looking at the games that No Man's Sky could have been and was trying to be. But first off, No Man's Sky. You certainly have an idea in your mind about No Man's Sky, whether you've played it or not. Of course, I want to take a subjective view of it before we start talking about my feelings. Almost like this is video game journalism, or something. The hype train for this game began back in 2013. That's not embellishing or anything, whether you reward it or not, this was a hype train. But that doesn't make it a bad game. The hype train isn't Hello Games' fault, it's not their fault. Sure, they showed us pictures of a game they didn't deliver, told us about features they were planning on putting in, but we're putting in this whole product. We believed it, like we do. We generated a hype train, and anyone who still had hope in games after Halo 5, SimCity, Colonial Marines, Final Hallway 15, would have boarded that train. So, it's our fault. We should have remembered the way that we've been let down. Uh, alighted from that train and actually thought, hey, maybe we should wait for some actual gameplay. Of course, the facts here are that it got average reviews. Not sure why 6 out of 10 or 4 out of 5 is average, but because that's not really how averages work. But it, anyway, your standard play for an hour, then watch some streamer play it review. At least I've tried it a few times and let it stew for a few months in between. Many of those reviews state repetition and tedium being the ultimate distinction of the sky of no men. No Man's Sky is a space sandbox with exploration and crafting being the main themes. It missed the mark by a mile, ending up as an exercise in patience. A lot of the worst things haven't been fixed by the update. Spaceships that handle like drunken cows? Seriously, how am I supposed to work with this? A loading screen that slips and slurs like my next hot remix? It's your boy Harriet Skelly bringing in a hot new remix. I'm part of the PC gaming master race, that's not a hardware issue. Talking about loading issues though. The render distance either needs to be much larger or hidden from you, because that is damn distracting. OH GOD MY EYES! And finally, before I start my comparisons, why did they make up elements? Isn't there enough on the periodic table? Oh yeah, Thamium 9. That's, that's a pretty cool element. I guess that could go right here, next to the element of surprise. So yeah, I don't like it. It's going to sit in my library to remind me never to pre-order a game that I haven't seen gameplay or managed to play a demo of. I think the only redeeming quality is the music. Sure, it's kind of what you'd expect to find when you googled space music, but that's not a bad thing. It would be bad if it was the kind of music you could find by googling Arse Washer 5, the Arse Return soundtrack. Damn it, that's not a thing. But the thing that gets me the most is the theory that it's exactly what I wanted it to be. Space Minecraft. But you know what's actually really boring and contrite? That's right. Calculus. There are some very big differences in Minecraft worth noting though. Mainly because they help emphasize the many flaws in the No Sky Man. Minecraft has years of work put into it. It's being tested all the time. By thousands of people. Players, in fact. And it has been like that since alpha testing. No Man's Sky charged full price from the get-go, and it barely had enough actual features to be even called a game at all. The team at Mojang slowly constructed the blocky goodness, ending up with a land-based sandbox that's mainly about crafting, but has come to include fighting and exploration. There's always something to do in Minecraft, even if you've done it all. You can always do something differently, and then there'll be another update adding all new stuff to do, or mods. Minecraft started in a different time. It all 
will seem so long ago now, back when indie game creation was few and far between. Back in a better time for games. Nostalgia may be blinding me at this point. When the only voice we trusted to help us buy a game was that of our friends, or Yahtzee Croshaw from Escapist Magazine. Now, I could also bring up multiplayer, because technically Minecraft had it on its release, but I was there during beta, and there was some teething to be done. I'll give the benefit of the doubt and say No Man's Sky will someday have a multiplayer. Ultimately, though, Minecraft is actually a blast to play. I have actually lost months of my life to it before. No Man's Sky has only taken about six hours in total, and they're ones that I'm keen to get back. But, in talking about time dumps, there are other space games on the market. Most of them are nothing like No Man's Sky, because they're mostly set in reality and are actually trying to virtualize the fun parts of spaceships and spaceflight. Things like Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen. Space is a pretty common setting these days, and why wouldn't it be? It's the final frontier, guys. I mean, sure, in here we could also fit in Mass Effect and the general thing, but that it's more of an RPG. I'm talking like free-roaming space flight games. And while I could have used one of those to compare to, I'm going to do that thing again, and I'm going to review a slightly older game. Freelancer is a game that many in my generation may not have heard of. It is actually the older brother of Star Citizen. It has taken several good days, probably years from me, and I would be willing to give so many more. If only I could find a mod that fixes the resolution, oh, and if I could play it natively on Windows 10 and not have to use my time machine. Freelancer is an A plus game for me. Although it's not in my top 5, it's in my top 10. You know those times when you hear that William Shatner as Captain Kirk made people interested in astrology or physics? Well, Freelancer is my... actually, that's probably Doctor Who? Well, I came for the Doctor, then stayed for the Freelancer, then continued to stay for the Doctor. This game has some old graphics, many of the voices sound robotic, not just the robot ones, and if I wanted to go into scientific inaccuracies then we'll be here till the actual release of Star Citizen. You know, things like planets are supposed to rotate around stars, and most star systems won't have wormholes just randomly, sporadically around through them that lead on to perfectly other well thought out star systems not too far away. But you know what it does have? People. There's a brilliant attempt at some life. They barely had the technology, and they made a significantly large game with something to do. You can be a trader, a merc, a crime fighter, or a rogue disrupting trade lanes. I think this is a Cowboy Bebop reference. There may be a storyline about aliens that doesn't really lead to anything in-game, but at least it has one. There's a goddamn monkey planet. You could generate a planet full of giraffe-looking-ass butt pirates, but unless you got yourself a monkey planet, you have no business being an unrealistic space game. Sorry. So yeah, No Man's Sky is a 3 to 5 out of 10 for me. I feel like if you stick with it, it may become like Minecraft is today. But I also feel that we already have Minecraft, and it's hard enough to get adults to play that these days. Otherwise, check out Minecraft if you haven't already. Start with some friends if you can. If you have a time machine, check out Freelance. And stay tuned for more Harriet Scaly plays. At this rate, it'll be six goddamn years from now.